Thank you. Uh, so when I first got into the activist scene about seven years ago, there really wasn't much in terms of footage or photos or anything or information in general about animal agriculture in Australia, factory farms and slaughterhouses, that kind of thing. Um, and I'd heard this myth time and time again that cruelty doesn't happen here in Australia because we've got organisations like the RSPCA that are there to intervene when, when things go wrong. Um, but of course the fact is that the standards, the industry standards are what is cruel and that there's no way to humanely kill an animal who doesn't want to die. Um, so in 2012 we came across a piggery just outside of Canberra called Wally's and we decided to investigate it. And what we found there was horrific. It was life-changing for me and for everyone involved in that campaign. We found a, a little slaughter room on site where the owner, Wally, was bludgeoning his pigs to death. I, I should warn you, this, this could get a bit graphic in the wording that I use throughout this speech. So we found that the owner was bludgeoning his pigs to death. We put up hidden cameras to capture it. We also found workers kicking piglets along the aisles in the farrowing crate shed like footballs while their mothers ran after them screaming. We investigated for about two months and released the footage to a huge public outcry across Australia and around the world. Uh, it, was, it was massive in mainstream media. And of course the industry turned around and said, um, well he's a, a one-off, a rogue operator, he doesn't represent our industry. Meanwhile, RSPCA and the police were set to do a raid on his farm to get evidence for themselves, and the Department of Primary, in Primary Industries actually tipped Wally off a couple of days before the raid, so when they turned up, there wasn't all that much to find. Ultimately, though, RSPCA still laid 53 charges of animal cruelty against Wally. Those charges were later dropped after the Department of Primary Industries intervened and threatened to remove RSPCA's powers if they pursued with the case. However, ultimately, due to the huge public outcry that the footage received, we were able to get that piggery shut down about a year later. Thank you. So, as I said, the industry called this a rogue operator, a one-off. They said it wasn't representative of their industry, so we set out to prove them wrong. And the website AussiePigs.com was launched, and a year and a half later, there were another 13 piggeries on that website depicting more of the same conditions, more of the same issues that we were seeing time and time again across the country. A number of other websites also launched, Aussie Eggs, Aussie Turkeys, Aussie Ducks and Aussie Chickens, showing the farming and slaughtering practices of those species. In some of those piggeries that we investigated, we found cases where there were animals in immediate need of veterinary help. They had horrible, horrible conditions. There was one sow who had these two giant prolapses that were being eaten by maggots. We found another sow who uh, she'd given birth to a litter of stillborns and somehow in that process she'd, uh, her back legs had become paralyzed. So she was at the back of her farrowing crate which is this kind of cage where the sows are kept while they, their piglets run around them um, after they've been born. So we found a Paralyzed at the back of the, her cage, she was unable to pull herself forward to the food and water at the front of her cage, so she started eating, the, eating her own front legs. And both those times, we went straight to the police, we went straight to the RSPCA, and we said, you need to get there now because these animals need your help. And they didn't listen to us, they ignored us, and ultimately uh, charged us for it. But the farmers involved in those situations never saw any charges at all. And that sow who was eating her own front legs, basically what had happened, she'd been left there over the weekend to see if she got any better. Of course she didn't, so they shot her. Another huge piggery that we came, we came across was called Blantyre. And in this piggery, hidden cameras were installed to see what was going on. Those cameras were actually found by the farmers. And they set a trap for when activists came back, which resulted in a five-hour hunt through the middle of the night and the activist car being destroyed that was all reported to the police, and again, nothing happened. No, the charges weren't farm. Sorry, the farmers weren't charged, but the activists were charged. In early 2014, we visited the largest pig slaughterhouse in the southern hemisphere, in Corowa, New South Wales. This has this slaughterhouse has a carbon dioxide gas chamber, as do most large pig slaughterhouses across Australia now. About 90% or over 90% of pigs killed in Australia go through these gas chambers. And for over 20 years, this chamber had been in operation 
and the industry had been calling it humane. They had been telling us that the pigs simply fall asleep. What we uncovered with this world first footage of, of inside the chambers was completely the opposite. We learned that when carbon dioxide reacts with liquid, reacts with the mucous membranes in your eyes, in your mouth, your nostrils, your lungs, it forms carbonic acid. So these pigs were basically burning alive from the inside out. They were screaming and thrashing with every last breath in these cages, these gondolas, as they're lowered into this excruciatingly painful gas. Every single pig who goes through that system suffers immensely in their final moments. And we were told it was humane. That footage was seen by well over 10 million people around the world. And a few months after that, we captured and released similar footage from South Australia's largest pig slaughterhouse, Big River Pork, near Murray Bridge, showing exactly the same thing. And then last year, we released a different type of Australian first footage. A lot of vegans who are activists, but um, not so much the general public, are aware that in the egg-laying industry, male chicks are considered useless because they'll never be able to lay eggs. So they are killed at one day old. Around 12 million of them in, in Australia every year. And the largest hatchery where they're born and, and where that killing occurs is at Bendigo in Victoria. And what happens there, the male chicks are put on a separate conveyor belt and they fall into what is essentially a giant industrial blender called a macerator. And they're blended up alive. Now, that macerate is, is inside a sealed room. It's hidden from workers, so that the workers never actually have to see what's going on. They just put the birds on a conveyor and they disappear off into another room. Now, that, being, that room being sealed actually gave an activist an opportunity to hide in there overnight, wearing a worker's uniform, film the maceration with a handheld camera, then escape while the staff were on break, again, wearing a, you know, wearing a worker's uniform and walk off into the woods with this footage that had never been seen before in Australia. You know, it was something we'd known had been happening for so long, but had never been able to prove. And that footage, similar to the gas chamber footage, was seen by tens of millions of people all over the world and, and had huge mainstream media in Australia. A couple of days after we released that footage... 21 of us then entered that hatchery and shut down their operations for a couple hours to draw further attention to what was going on. And that footage can all be seen at exexposed.com. So in October 2014, I released a film called Lucent. And this film contains footage from over 50 piggeries and slaughterhouses across Australia. So by this time, this rogue operator myth had been well and truly defeated. Eight months after releasing Lucent, I had a knock on my door at my home here in Adelaide, and I was raided by about 12 police. They took pretty much everything. They took my computers, my hard drives, my cameras, documents, anything and everything that interested them. And while they were doing that, they were lecturing me about how bad I was and, and how I should go the legal routes of contacting the RSPCA, contacting the police when we believed that there was an incident of animal cruelty. And I had to bite my tongue thinking the number of times we had gone through those routes, gone through those channels when there were animals in immediate need of help and we were ignored. And here I was being treated like the bad guy. At the same time, a friend of mine in Sydney was raided. Um, so after this, I felt livid anger for several days. I didn't know... I. I had a lot of trouble coping and one night I just kind of lost it and I, I got in my car, I drove out to a pig slaughterhouse thinking I'm just going to sit there and watch what's going on and try to remind myself why, why I'm doing this, why I would put myself through this. And on that trip I happened to be listening to the new album by Of Monsters and Men, a song came on called Thousand Eyes. I went home that night, downloaded all my footage that I'd uploaded because the police had taken all my original footage. I re-downloaded all my footage and created a video called Thousand Eyes, which is now being shown in over 150 cities around the world and turning people vegan after vegan after vegan. It is opening eyes, and it truly was a silver lining of this horrible event that happened, this raid. In October that year, I was charged with 17 counts of break and enter to commit serious indictable offence with a maximum penalty of 14 years in prison. Those charges were dropped a few months later, but new charges were issued under the New South Wales Surveillance Devices Act, 
So I had 10 charges. Four of those were for using a, a surveillance device, like a handheld camera, to film an activity, the activity being pig farming and slaughter. Six of those charges were for publishing footage of animal cruelty, publishing footage of industry standard legal cruelty that happens in Australian pig farms and pig slaughterhouses. So that footage I talked about of the gas chamber that had never been seen in the world, consumers were being deceived for 20 years, I was charged for publishing that footage. This was the first case of what's called ag-gag laws in Australia. And after about two years of court dates, it finally went to trial in August this year. A three-day trial was set. Police turned up with these huge boxes of evidence, these smug looks on their faces. But their case was flawed in many ways, um, the most notable of which was that in our constitution there's an implied freedom of political communication in that they're not supposed to use laws in a way that pre prevent people from finding out and discussing matters of legitimate public interest and political matters, and animal rights clearly is a political matter. Um, but we didn't even get to that argument because the police were unable to prove that they had obtained the correct authorization from the state government to lay the charges in the first place. The magistrate spoke of what he called the incompetence of the police and lent, lamented at the vast time and resources that had been spent on relatively minor offences at the expense of the reputation and well-being of myself and my co-defendant. And he then dismissed all charges just over one hour into a three-day trial. <laughs> Our lawyers immediately stood up and sought costs and the police were ordered to pay a sum of $56,000. <laughs> So I'm currently working on a follow-up film to, um, to Lucent. It's called Dominion. It's coming out in March 2018. Um, I would have loved to be able to show the trailer here today, but I can't. But if you go to watchdominion.com, you'll be able to see that trailer. About a week after that was released, it had over a million views. And Dominion, I'm hoping, will serve as Australia's answer to Earthlings. Because when people watch Earthlings these days, they say, oh, that's America, it doesn't apply to Australia, or, oh, that's old footage. So Dominion is Australian recent footage showing what happens to not every animal, but, but um, you know, a wide variety of animals, a wide variety of ways that animals are used and abused in Australia. So the way they're used for food, for entertainment, for clothing, um, for medical research, etc., Dominion will premiere in, in Melbourne uh, on March 29 next year, followed by screenings around the country, including here in Adelaide, culminating in what I'm tentatively calling the Dominion March, where I hope to see over a 1,000 people taken to the streets of Melbourne to show the footage from that film to the public. And following that, we're going to have six months of guerrilla marketing constituting what I call the Empire Project, coordinated actions and outreach aimed at pushing for the tipping point where this movement will snowball beyond control with Dominion and a couple of other Aussie Farms tools at its centre. One of those tools is called the Repository. If you go to aussiefarms.org.au now, you'll see this website, the Repository. It's basically a giant uh, database, a giant collection of over 12,000 photos, um, hundreds of hours of footage, campaign materials, industry documents, research articles, and details about facilities. So there's over 2,000 factory farms and slaughterhouses detailed um, in a directory on that website. And that website is open to anyone to upload and contribute their own material. So if you happen to go to an event where animals are being abused or you happen to break into a chicken farm or something like that, you've now got a place where you can put that footage to build up towards this, this overall picture of what's going on, um, what's happening to animals in our country. The aim is to bring together every piece of evidence and material into the one place to make the world's largest, most comprehensive database, clearly laying out every aspect of those industries that profit from the exploitation of animals. So Aussie Farms operates under the belief that animal abuse industries rely on secrecy and deception, using marketing ploys such as humanely slaughtered and free range, and imagery depicting happy animals living out their days in rolling green hills in the sunshine. Now, by breaking down this secrecy and making it easier for consumers to see the truth about what their purchases support, 
and easier also for us as activists to spread that truth the commercialized abuse and exploitation of animals will slowly but surely come to an end. I believe that information freely and readily accessible is our greatest and most powerful tool. And that's what Aussie Farms is all about. That's what I'm working on. Um, and if you want to get involved, if you go to the Aussie Farms website, there's a volunteer page on there. Fill out your details and, um, and please help me in, in making this industry that's dependent on secrecy, forcing transparency upon them to hopefully bring them to an end. Um, that's about all. How am I doing for time? Five? Yeah. Does anyone have any questions? I normally show videos, so it pads out the time a bit. So, Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, Joey. Thank you, Chris, man. I love it. There you go, Joey. Thank you. With the dairy industry here in Australia, have you ever seen inside dairy uh, t cows kept inside? Is it all uh, out in the grass and grassland here in Australia or all grass-fed cows? Or um, There are some dairy farms that have these large kind of... They're not fully enclosed buildings, but these, these long sheds, the sides are open and they spend a lot of their time in there, but they do still have access to the outside a lot of the time. So we don't so much have these kind of factory farm dairies yeah. as, as they do in other countries. But of course, dairy has plenty of problems. Last year, or no, earlier this year, we uh, released footage of the bobby calves being killed. So the male calves, similar to the egg industry, the male calves are of no use because they, they can't ever produce milk. So some 700,000 of them are killed every year in Australia. And they're taken away from their mothers. And we, we captured footage of these calves being taken and their mothers are running after the trailer trying to get their babies back just as, just as human mothers would. So dairy, um, regardless of any slight differences between Australia and how it's done elsewhere in the world, it's still a horrific industry here. And can you talk about blunt force trauma for day-old uh, calves? Have you seen footage of that? I haven't seen footage of it. We've had tip-offs of it where there was a, there was a farm where... Um, they basically use a hammer, smack the calves on the head on the farm. So that happens a lot also. So there's about 700,000 calves that go to slaughterhouses, but we don't know how many are killed or left to die on the farms. But it's, you go to the Dairy Australia's website, you read their documentation, you can read how blunt force trauma is the recommended way to do it. So these are things that they're, they're kind of trying to keep hidden, but you can find it in all their documents. And yet when we release this, this footage, they say, ah, oh, no, that's, that doesn't represent our industry. So it's a bit of a double standard there. Uh, anyone else? Qu question for Chris, folks? Yes, sure, mate. Thank you. Come, come around here, mate. Um, in regards to uh, the film Dominion that you're looking at releasing, is there going to be campaigns where we can donate to support to hopefully uh, make it go worldwide rather than just in Australia? Because... Lucent was great, but a lot of people overseas did uh, not know about it. So will there be a way to support it? And will it be on diff different social media platforms such as like Facebook and, um, you know, the internet and all that? Yeah, definitely. So hopefully this, uh, sorry, next weekend we'll be launching a new crowdfunding campaign on Indiegogo, mostly aimed at American audiences because the trailer had such a huge impact in America as well. This is a film that people all o over the world seem to, to think is needed, which took me a bit by surprise because of how Australian-focused it is. But it's still, um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of support for it already in America, so we'll be pushing that with this new crowdfunding campaign that, um, that anyone can contribute to. And following the Australian screenings, uh, it's, we're going to screen it in several states in the US and possibly Canada and New Zealand as well. Thank you, Chris. Anyone else? Anyone keen to know anything about the crazy, amazing life that Chris leads or the work he does. Thank you, mate. Thanks for the talk, Chris. And again, I think I represent everyone here and we say thanks for the awesome work you do. Um, can we you. just get another round of applause for him? <laughs> thanks very much. Um, I just want to ask you quickly, how you personally deal with people that watch the kind of footage that you have captured or are responsible for producing and still say... I just don't care. Like, so I, I got together a group of my friends from high school 
told them, hey, come watch a documentary I supported, which was Lucent, which I donated to to help get it made. Thank you. We watched it. Uh, we all cried our eyes out, and a couple of them yelled at certain parts. Um, and then all five of them ate meat the next day. How, how do you... I, I had trouble speaking to them ever again. How, how do you personally deal with that sort of stuff? I try not to be too bothered by it, um, because even if they don't turn vegan right then and there, you've at least planted the seed, and then they might go see vegan activists doing outreach in the streets, or they might hear one of Joey's talks or something else, and it's just kind of building that up, adding those, those points, and when they reach 100 points, you know, that's it, they're vegan. So you, it may not work at, at the time, but also there's people who... They just don't care, and it's not worth your time. You know, move on to someone who does care, because plenty of people see this footage. They had no idea it happens, and they no longer want to support it. And those are the people that I'm targeting. Um, and I think that's, that's the majority of Australians. People do care about animals here. They just don't know what's actually happening. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Any, anyone else? We've got a minute to fill. It's absolutely fine. All questions... Are are accepted. Are you cool to keep going on? Yes, Joey Carbstrong, once more with feeling. All right, so a big issue with the seeing the crazy footage going into these farmers is like post-traumatic stress. How do you deal with, uh, you know, that yourself? Like mental issues, you know, seeing the suffering, suffering. You're probably suffering with the animals a lot. Having to leave these farms without being able to save them all. How do you personally deal with it? Uh, honestly, I'm... I'm pretty desensitized i'm a little bit dead inside and it's um i actually like it when i can still be affected by things because it reminds me i'm still human and a lot of the time like i've sat through probably more slaughterhouse footage than anyone in the world thousands of hours literally thousands of hours searching through this footage to find things that people are going to connect to and you just you have to shut it off and I, I was given a tour me and a friend of mine were given a tour of a chicken slaughterhouse here in australia a few nights ago and you know, it's happening right in front of us, and I'm just, I'm not being affected by it. And a few years ago, I would have been. But this time, I'm just thinking, how do I get my camera out, kind of? Yeah. It, yeah, it doesn't take long, because these are the, some horrific things that we're seeing. And if you, if you don't shut off, then it will, yeah, it will kind of destroy you. It will make you want to stop. It's amazing work, Chris. Thank Yeah, yeah. Yes, Joey. One sec. Use this guy. Do, do you feel somewhat empowered when you have your camera and this is happening? Like, hey, I can do something about this in the moment. So does that help? Absolutely. I guess, yeah, if, if I didn't have the camera, then I'd probably feel quite hopeless. Yeah. But I get a lot of um, you know, mental strength from being able to see something bad and actually do something yeah. about it. So put it into a film, get it out onto yeah. the internet or wherever and, and see that tens of thousands or millions of people are watching it. And that makes me think, all right, I've actually done something about that. I don't, I don't have to feel bad about that. Yeah. So that would be your advice to activists that feel that way. They, they're empowered if they've got this knowledge. Yeah, get out there and, and do something with it. Use it. It, it, it. If it makes you anger, use that anger. Don't go screaming at people, but you can use that anger in, in what you do to kind of keep you motivated, to keep that fire burning inside you.